Kidco Mining special coverage of the Mines and Money Miami is brought to you by Snowline Gold. What type purity manganese and why does it matter to energy transition? Matt James is here to explain. Matt is CEO of Euro Manganese. Matt, welcome back to Kidco. Thank you very much. There's been a lot that has happened at the company. I want to get into the developments, but maybe first you could thumbnail what you're focused on. Yeah, so the company is focused on high purity manganese production. We have a deposit in the Czech Republic um, and we are a battery metals company. It is an interesting project because it's actually tailings that you're focused on. Correct. The deposit is a historical mine uh, that was mining pyrite. So it's 27 million tons of uh, tailings sitting on the surface. And actually what's really great about this project is currently that's not a line, but, and so it's a polluting, it's a source of pollution. We will be putting our tailings back properly lined, dry stacked and capped, and resolving that pollution issue. Now, you've done a ton of work on this. We were just talking about this. I want to get to that because, uh, you know, there's a lot to catch up on. It seems we only met uh, in June in uh, Quebec City. But uh, first, uh, just talk about uh, high purity manganese itself. Uh, what is it and why is it important? So every battery that's uh, on an NMC chemistry, the M stands for manganese. So every electric vehicle battery, pretty much every electric vehicle battery requires manganese, but it's not talked about. We often hear lithium, nickel, cobalt, but manganese is just as important. And in fact, it's becoming more important because it's the most affordable of those battery metals. So many of the cathode companies or battery companies are developing manganese-rich chemistries to lower the cost of the battery. What is the current supply uh, structures like? So currently the market's about 170,000 tons. And the vast majority, like 95%, comes out of China. Um, the market's forecast to grow to over a million tons uh, of high purity manganese, just from the underlying growth in the EV battery industry. And what's really important now is the geopolitics, the requirement for local source of supply, whether it's IRA in, in the US or the critical raw materials battery app that's coming out in Europe. The desire for that local source of supply is, is important. So the investment in the purification process or the refining process is what's really going to be delivered into Western, Western Europe or, or the US. Now, you're in Czech Republic. Uh, you mentioned IRA, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, that was the uh, 2022 uh, bill that was passed by the Biden administration, which has uh, really provided a lot of support for uh, critical metal companies like uh, Gervois, like uh, Linus, uh, like Piedmont Lithium. Uh, now, uh, you give your perspective uh, based being in Europe and also being in Czech. What type of support are you getting there for critical metals from governments? I think the European industry and the European government has noticed investment move from Europe to the US. And so there's a program now with this Critical Raw Materials Act to respond to that, not necessarily compete with it, but to make Europe more competitive or equally competitive and bring some subsidies, particularly, I think they're focused on the front end of the supply chain, the mining, and the back end of the supply chain, recycling. Because there's been a lot of investment in the battery plants themselves, but it's supplying those critical raw materials in Europe, which is really important. It's interesting because Europe was kind of a leader uh, just off of like 2020, and then they had the uh, breakout of the pandemic, and then they needed to do all of the, um, uh, all of the, uh, how would you say, injecting money, uh, the incentives uh, to actually, the they had- The Recovery Act. Yeah, yeah. the Recovery Act, because uh, yeah. the uh, tremendous incentives that they had uh, out of France, for instance, uh, for buying electric vehicles. Yeah. But it seems right now that uh, the US is caught up and- uh, I think the, the, the US has leapfrogged over the top with the IRA. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what uh, Europe needs to respond to and is planning to respond to. Um, bring us up again, uh, since again, again, we met in June. So what have been some of the developments? Out some project? really great developments for the company. We've hit all of our milestones that we set ourselves for 2022. The, the main one being the publication of our feasibility study, very strong, robust economics. So uh, net present value of our base case of $1.3 billion. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a 25 year mine life project. So uh, that's been a major step forward. 
that's allowed us to then get the data to feed into our final environmental social impact assessment. That was launched in December uh, 2022. That's got about a six month process on it yeah. for approvals. And we've also published our life cycle assessment and that showed that our plans for using 100% renewable power um, means that we'll have a CO2 footprint, which is about one third of that of the Chinese industry. So that is really important for our customer base. We put in our first offtake term sheet with Vercor, which is the battery company for Renault yeah. uh, in Europe. And that CO2 footprint was one of the key determinants for them to put that contract in place. Uh, we've also published our sustainability study, again, putting ESG right at the heart of everything that we do in the company. Uh, the any concerns with uh, substitution at all with uh, manganese or is it something that you just consider that the market is going to continue to grow? I think the market is going to continue to grow and actually manganese being that affordable battery metal is the last one that's going to be substituted. You know, Numacor have just announced their manganese rich chemistry that's got 60% manganese in it instead of an 811 high nickel chemistry which is about 10% manganese. So we're actually substituting the cobalt out and reducing the nickel with, with manganese. How much of the process when you're putting together is it going to be new? Is it going to be experimental? And then how much is it kind of off the shelf? So the core process is the same process that's used in the industry today in China. Yeah. We are wrapping tighter environmental controls around it. And, and we're not using some of the more harmful chemicals that are used in China, particularly selenium. We are producing a selenium-free product and we're not using fluorine either, which is commonly used in, in the Chinese industry. Uh, talk about community relations in Czech. Because we're actually cleaning up the environment and we're not creating a new mine, um, the community engagement has been very positive. We've done that right from the start of the project, open days, community engagement, progressively uh, increasing that communication to the community about the project, proactively going out to the NGOs in the Czech Republic and telling them about our project. And there really hasn't been any backlash or, or uh, people against the project there. Lastly, Matt, uh, milestones over the next 12 months. So looking forward, we will be appointing our APCM contractor by the end of the quarter. We had five very good bids from international EPCM companies. So we're just narrowing that down to the last one now. The demonstration plan is in. That's being commissioned as we speak. That commissioning is on track to be completed by the end of Q1. And then we'll be able to deliver samples to customers in Q2. And then putting in the project finance. Uh, so we've appointed Stiefel as our debt advisor People, company, uh, European institutions like um, the EIB, uh, who are a cornerstone um, uh, shareholder, uh, want to be a cornerstone debt provider. Um, and then we've appointed uh, BMO as our equity advisor. Our strategy for the equity is to sell down 10 to 20 percent at project level, um, and BMO are very well placed to do that for us. And then then put in some. Uh, private placements and public offering to finish off the equity placement. Matt, thanks for telling us about it. Thank you very much. My name is Michael McRae with Kitco Mining here at Mines & Money Miami. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Mines & Money Miami is brought to you by Snowline Gold.